A few weeks ago, the Liberty Hotel near Mass General put up the most curious, most provocative holiday decoration installations that I have seen. Seven upside down, fully trimmed, fully lit Christmas trees hanging in suspension above the lobby. Patrons can climb the stairs as the, of the lobby as the trees widen and flatten as they ascend. Visitors marvel at this gravity-defying, norm-breaking horticulture as they playfully pose for photos underneath these dangling pines. I've got good news for you. You don't have to stay at the pricey Liberty Hotel to join in this hottest trend of Christmas chic. Upside-down Christmas trees are on the rise. You can purchase pre-lit artificial Christmas trees that are upside down for many holiday decor providers these days. At $300, $400, you can take part in the latest, greatest holiday trend of upside down Christmas trees. Now, the benefits of displaying this inverted Yuletide tradition speaks for themselves. For those of us in small, cramped, urban apartments, there, are more, there is more floor space. For those of us with fine Christmas tree ornaments, no longer do they become lost, displayed in green prickly branches. And of course, with the tree descending in size as it reaches the floor, there becomes more room for Christmas presents. But unfortunately for the Liberty Hotel and for those of us who are eager to take part in this wonderful, contemporary, cool form of cheer, the inverted Christmas tree is not modern at all but rather old. The tradition goes back to the 8th century when an English monk used an inverted fir tree as a triangular shape to describe that curious holy trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And soon the symbol of an upside-down pine became closely associated with Christians throughout Western Europe. By the Middle Ages, there developed this custom around this time of year in the weeks leading up to Christmas to invert the pine tree and hang them upside down from ceilings in cathedrals and in palaces and in homes alike. But they weren't normal pine trees. They were fashioned with ribbons and vegetables, fruits and handcrafted ornaments. Dangling pines that were fixed with decorations depicting prophecies related to the birth of Jesus. And they called these trees, do you know just what they called these trees? They called them Jesse trees. The tradition is rooted in the words of the prophet Isaiah, a shoot shall come forth out of the stump of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. Jesse being the spiritual ancestor of the line of King David, the royal line that some say point to Jesus. So each day leading up to Christmas, folks would add another ornament that somehow represented another figure in the story that leads up to the birth of Christ. They would display maybe an apple to represent Adam and Eve, a crown to represent King David a lily flower to represent Mary, the mother of Jesus. Like our stained glass windows, these trees were teaching tools for the faithful. So by Christmas, the entire history of the people of God wrapped around the tree. Symbols of Noah and the flood, seraphim and cherubim, Joseph and his colorful cloak, Symbols depicting all of those who came before Jesus, telling the story of his lineage and his authority. A shoot shall come up from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The prophet Isaiah was writing in a time when the people of Israel faced an uncertain future. When warring factions created a power vacuum, everyone was wrestling to lead the nation. And when long -standing, the long-standing monarchy, that line of David, the promise of God, it had been cut down and reduced to a stump. 
and in the face of chaos and terror of those days. The prophet Isaiah gives them, gives us this new vision, God's vision for the world. Isaiah says that in God's vision for the world, the wolf shall lie down with the lamb, and the leopard shall dwell with the goat, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. It's called the peaceable kingdom, a vision of a new world in which everything has been reset. Warring factions fall to peace, a reordered creation in which opposites dwell in harmony. Defensive instincts are transformed and the most vulnerable humans in society are made free. It's an inside-out, upside-down vision of the world that Christians tend to believe is ushered in with the hope and ministry of Jesus. So perhaps there's something more to that upside-down Christmas tree at the Liberty Hotel, something unforeseen by modern designers and cunning retailers, the upside-down Christmas tree a striking symbol for the story we are readying ourselves to hear. It's a story of radical reversals and inversions, a vision of an upside-down world, a topsy-turvy society as the promises of God comes to earth in the form of a gravity-bound, breath-dependent, newborn infant. In this story, in God's story, we find a world in which the meek inherit the earth and the hungry filled with good. We hear of peace that is won not by armies or guns or violence or tweets, but through forgiveness and humanity and conversation. We hear of a world in which even death is exchanged for resurrection. It is a story in which God turns the tree of life upside down and shakes off our fragilities and our sensibilities, our privilege and our sin, falling to the ground like needles. That is the promise for which we prepare during the season of Advent. The promise from God that this life, that this world as it is now, will not always be. The promise which defines, defies our expectations born on Christmas, ushering in a vision of God's wonderfully curious inverted realm, that peaceable kingdom, an upside-down reality, as odd and as curious as an upside-down Christmas tree. Amen. Amen.